Okay, just really quick uh, video here. Just want to show a little trick. Um, if you work on old radios, this is a CB radio. Probably <laughs> the largest uh, mobile solid state CB radio ever made. This thing is a monster. Um, it's a CPI Digicom 100. Got a couple of these. This one is a fairly recent acquisition. Not working on it now. Um, just want to fix a little cosmetic thing before I stick it on the shelf. Uh, just it, mainly so it doesn't prog the problem doesn't get any worse than it already is. Um, like I say, I'll restore this hopefully one year or some decade before I die. But uh, the problem this has, and it's a common problem on these and other, not just radios of this make from other manufacturers, can be a television, a tape deck, it can be anything. Um, it doesn't even have to be electronic, just plastic in general, because that's our problem, plastic. The knobs break. And what breaks in the knobs, oh, where's my spudger? If you look down in here, you can see there's a crack right there. There's a crack right there. I don't know if this one... I can, I'm trying to look through the viewfinder. <laughs> That's hard for me to tell. Yeah, and there's actually... There's another crack right in the line that goes across there. But when you... And I can probably push out... Yeah, you can see see it's cracked right there. Okay, most knobs... Now, this what I'm going to show you works on pretty much any, any plastic um, anything. Uh, but... What these have, uh, knobs, if you're not familiar, they have what they call knob springs. So that goes in, and that's basically kind of like a reinforcement. Fills in the gap, too, which slides over the shaft. But, yeah, this one was literally falling off. You'd just tap the radio a couple times, and the knob would fall off. Because these ears had bent out. It, it had gotten progressed to, you know, that it was so bad. Um, I wanted to pull this one off. This one was still tight, but I wanted to pull it off and see if it was cracked, because that's what happens. It's cracked, and it's just over time that it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, and then eventually it cracks along, you know, the bottom side, and the pieces will break off. So I want to try and stop that from progressing any farther, and I've, and I've already repaired this one. See, that one's nice and tight. I'm to pull back off here. So you can see this one has the knob spring in it, and it's been glued. Now, what I'm using is not normal glue like you would think about it. Glue that has, you know, sticky stuff that's, you know, sticks to anything. Really, what we're doing is welding this, but we're not using heat. We're using basically a solvent to glue this together or weld the plastic back together. And it's actually very strong. If you let it set up properly, um, this stuff, I've, I've used it not on so much knobs, but other things. I mean, I had a squeegee like a window squeegee one time, the handle snapped off. Just, it was old. Um, but I liked it. So I glued it back together with some plastic weld. And um, it eventually broke again, but it broke in a different place than where I had glued it. This stuff is very strong, and it should be as strong as it was when it was original, if not, you know, the original plastic. So I don't think this brand is made anymore. Um... I get this from a local hobby shop. I think he even has, still has some on the shelf. But there, I know some places there just aren't any real, real hobby shops anymore. Luckily for me, I just go over to Gettysburg and uh, Gilbert's Hobby Shops over there. Uh, Tommy Gilbert's been, been in the model train business for forever. I mean, since I was a kid. But uh, yeah, you, what you want to look for, though, is a plastic weld. They may call it cement, but usually you're going to find the weld or welder on there. That's the main thing you're looking for. And this stuff works on everything. Now, not everything. There are a few plastics, especially your more modern plastics, that are chemical resistant. It won't weld those. But it does work on, like, styrene, uh, butyrate, ABS, acrylic, you know, lucite, plexiglass. Um, and if you look on eBay, Amazon, whatnot, usually what you'll see these listed as nowadays is styrene and ABS weld or welder welders. Um, but it's just basically solvent. It's really not glue. You can see it's 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 runny, you know, like isopropyl alcohol. It's really strong chemical smell. Um, yeah, it it's kind of hard to describe. I'm not sure. Actually, I don't know if it says on the bottle. Contains methyl chlorides. Oh, yeah, I'm sure this stuff's really good for the human body. <laughs> but it works really well for repairing plastic. The whole trick to this stuff is 
you apply a little bit to the crack, squeeze it together. Now that's the problem. It's down in a hole. How do I clamp that? Well, that's why there's some screwdrivers sitting over there. That's what I'm going to use. Because this is, like I say, a common problem on some knobs. You've got the center part sticks up in the middle of this outer part. So it's not like you can get down in there and clamp it on all sides. It's kind of hard. I mean, yeah, you could probably make up a spring ring to go around the outside and push it on. But yeah, still, it's kind of difficult. So this glue is, extre like I say, it's extremely thin. So it wicks its way down a crack very easily. If you hold two pieces of plastic together, I mean the length of my finger here, and apply a drop of that stuff up here, you'll just see it go whoop, it quickly just fills in the gap. It's, you know, the surface tension will draw it down. And because it's so runny, it's very, very, very thin. So I wanted to fix this one on camera, so let me just turn this sideways so the camera's kind of out of my way. Radio out the way, because the last thing I want to do is get some of this gunk on the... <laughs> on the actual radio cover there and destroy the cover. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that glue to those cracks and then just like I did with the knob I've already fixed, the screwdrivers of course are, you know, regular screwdrivers are a wedge and I'm just going to stick those down in there, stick three of them down in like so. You know, push them down in, that'll put the, and you'll see the, the molten, because that's basically what it does, it melts the plastic. It's kind of like a uh, plumber's glue almost except like I say this stuff's really really runny but um, shove these down in there you'll see the actual plastic once it's melted squeeze out that's why if you that other knob if you notice there was a little bump of plastic on the top side there that's the the plastic that the solvent had actually melted but it dries fairly quickly so you want to be kind of speedy at this Another thing, don't apply too much of this. That's a common mistake I think a lot of people have with this type of glue. If you keep applying it, keep applying it, keep applying it, keep applying it, you're going to end up with a very weak uh, repair. Just put a little bit on there. Just I'll go around with this. I'll stick it in the bottle. I'll touch it to the crack. You know, a drop basically on each crack, and that's it. Don't continue to keep it figuring, well, the more I put on there, the stronger it's going to get. No, no. You're, you just need to melt you know, basically a microscopic layer of the crack, get it basically to a molten, you know, a solvent melted state, push those two parts together and then let the, the solvent itself will dry away and then you're left with nothing but the plastic again, but it's fused itself back together. So, let me just take, I need to look down in here, make sure I see where all the cracks are. Actually, there's another one there. So I actually got four cracks. Kind of strange, there's actually one right there at the thickest part. <laughs> yeah, there's a fourth one right there. I'll put a drop there. Drop over here on that one. Drop on that one. And that one. Last little crack is just starting to show up. I'll get my screwdrivers. And that's basically it. I'll just set this off to side for about 10-15 minutes um, or so, you know, somewhere around there, something like that, while the solvent dries. And as you, s actually, let me just set that down, pull this other knob back off. Like I say, as you can see down in there, uh, spin the camera back around, I can't see the viewfinder. <laughs> you can see there's a blob of plastic, a little bit of a you know, a little bit sticking up right there. That's where, like I say, when it, when I squeezed it together by putting the screwdrivers in down, you down around the outside perimeter there, that molten plastic basically oozed out. But like I say, it dried. I reinstalled the uh, D spring back in there, and it's just as basically as good as it was the day it was made. I mean, you know, that stuff works really well. So if you've got broken knobs, it's just like I say, this stuff works on all types of plastics. It needs to be solvent you know, meltable basically um, so you know it won't work on the like I say the chemical resistant type modern plastics and you know the plastic whatever the lids made out of but yeah you can get this stuff online um, not this brand like I say this is the one thing I don't think Ambroid is in business anymore I think a few years ago I had actually looked online because my bottle was getting kind of actually man I really just need to order well I don't need to order like I say I think the last time I was over at Gilbert's he still had some but uh, 
yeah, there's other companies that still make this stuff. If you have a hobby shop, of course, you just go in there and get some. If, it, if they you know, sell model supplies like airplanes, cars, planes, trains, and all that kind of stuff. But uh, you can get it online, um, and it works great. Uh, just, you know, if you're using a lot of this stuff, you just want to make sure you're in well-ventilated area because, yeah, all kinds of nasty chemical fumes. Um, big thing is don't apply too much and let it dry completely. Let it cure. Like I say, it's not really so much curing. You're just letting it dry so all that solvent evaporates. Uh, if you go sticking the screwdrivers in there, like in this case, I just put the screwdrivers in there, I look at it go, ah, that looks good. Pull the screwdrivers out. As soon as I go to stick that, you know, this D-spring back in, back in there, it's just going to crack again because it won't have fully dried out. So very important, let it dry. Let, let, like any glue, let it completely cure. <laughs> it's not just this stuff. I see people fail with repairs. People are so impatient. They glue something. They're so used to super glue, you know, and it's stuck instantly. Well, most glues aren't like that. You need to you know, read the instructions. If it says let it cure for 24 hours, let it cure for 24 hours. This stuff actually says... Uh, yeah, hold together for 10 seconds, but I always let, like I say, 10 to 15 minutes just to make sure it's fully cured, because a lot of times, you got to remember, this was melt, meant basically for models, because it's sold in models, or was, this brand at least, it's sold in model stores, so you're doing fairly thin joints. If you're doing thick plastic, you've got to, it's got to dry the whole way through that crack, or the whole way through that joint, so yeah, a little bit of extra time never hurt anything. Better than trying to repair it again and again, because you got to remember, every time you apply this, if you if that crack, if it doesn't set the first time, if you're impatient and you come back to use this a second or a third time, every time you apply this, you're going to run into a problem with something like that where there's a hole. Along those crack lines, every time you apply this glue, it's melting, melting a thin layer of plastic, and then you push it together, and some of that plastic squeezes out. Well, if you don't wait for it to dry dry completely, it cracks again, you apply more glue, it's going to melt another layer of plastic, and when you squeeze it together, that's going to squeeze out. So your hole is going to get smaller, and eventually you're going to get, and very quickly, you're going to get to the point where something like this is not going to fit back in the hole again. So, yeah, you don't want to have to repair the same thing several times because it's going to shrink in diameter or length or whatever because, because you're actually melting some plastic and it gets squeezed out a little bit. So, yeah, just use, use properly. You shouldn't have any problems. Ha! Fooled you. Thought it was over. <laughs> so I had done the one, showed the one on camera, checked the other one. Of course, these three knobs are also cracked. This one even has a piece missing out of it, and it's just MIA. It is no more. Um, I haven't glued these yet. I'm going to. But I, I, I just had a bright idea. I thought I'd share it while I'm at it. Um... Because this still could crack again. It might not crack where I glued it, but it could still crack somewhere else. Because, yeah, that's not, it's only that thick. A lot of stress turning these big clunky knobs. So, um, I think I've come up with a way to prevent that from happening in the future. The big problem is it can, it can expand because of that gap down in there. So, we're going to use a hot glue gun, <laughs> basically, to fill in fill it in around the outside edge, that'll give it strength so it can't basically swell in diameter and eventually split. So, let me get that little drop off of there onto the silicon hot glue mat. And if you don't have these things, you can pick these things up on eBay. Actually, this, these, I got a bunch of these one time on eBay. They were like twice as wide. I use them as insulation. You'll occasionally see these laying inside of a radio when I've got something else laying on top so nothing shorts out. That's what these are, is hot, uh, hot glue mats. You know, they're a very extremely high heat silicon type rubber stuff. Very flexible, but it, this is what they're actually meant for. So if you ever want to get one, get some of these, just yeah, look for a hot glue mat on eBay. You'll you'll run into these things. You could also, um, if you want big sheets of this, you can get big sheets. I don't know if it'd be this whitish clear, but I've seen brown. You can get oven baking mats. Is another thing. Oven baking mats. They're you know food grade silicone. You know, they're meant to put you know, food directly on and you actually cook on them. But again, extremely high heat. So yeah, that's, I just use these so I don't get the glue. That way when you first turn it on, some always oozes out on, you don't want it on your bench or your radio or whatever. That way it's, and it just easily peels off of this stuff. It does, it doesn't stick to it. So I'm just going to come in here.
basically fill in around the perimeter there. Make sure I don't get any on the back of the lens, because <laughs> I don't want to cause any imperfections in the dial, the dial lens there. And that's it. So that ought to that ought to stiffen it up some, and actually it's oozing down in there. So once that cools, I'll put another layer to make sure it's at least up to the top of that inside part there. But yeah, so there's there's an idea for um, beefing this thing up so it doesn't happen again. So just thought I'd tack that onto the end.